our speaker, Dr. Ken Klimo. Uh, Ken is a professor of biology here at Wilkes, and he is actually chair of the department. In addition, he is president of the Pennsylvania Biological Survey, and he is also a very active member of the Ecological Society of America. Uh, as a matter of fact, he received the Society's Odom Award for Excellence in Ecology Education several years ago, and that recognized him as one of the top ecology educators, not only in Pennsylvania, but actually in the country. So we're real proud to have Ken on our staff, uh, on our faculty here, and he is going to talk to you about what it's like to be a biology student here at Wilkes. Okay. All right, so I hope that everybody can hear me okay, and um, I guess others will, will join in as we get going here. Actually, I'm expecting almost 30 students to, uh, to participate. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna share my screen. Now, I, I guess that many of you don't have uh, the ability to, to, to visualize things, but or to see what I'm, what I'm, you know, have the video on this, but uh, hopefully if I talk over everything, we'll be okay. Now, what, I, what I'd like to do is um, if I, I'll, I'll go through the presentation and then uh, if you have questions along the way, if you want to write the questions in on chat, that would be fine. And then we'll see toward the end um, if we're still a relatively small group, we can have a, um, you know, we can do an unmute and then maybe uh, have, have some good interaction here. So right now I'm going to share my screen and uh, what I have, and let me do this. So what I have is a uh, presentation here that's similar to the presentation that I give at our open houses. And so if you um, went to one of our open houses, you probably saw a lot of this already, although I'm recouching some of the things that, that we've talked about uh, before. And, um, but this will give you time to think about what I'm talking about and be able to ask questions. I know that during the open houses, uh, that we really don't have time to ask questions, but uh, now we will. I guess just to start out though, one of the things I should mention is that um, I'm, I'm thrilled to, to have you here. And uh, we're, you know, we're, we're uh, an, an institution that, as I'm gonna talk about, is very student oriented. And so, um, you know, there are a lot of reasons for, for coming to Wilkes to study biology. But what I'd like to do is just talk about it from the perspective of now that you're, uh, you know, more or less here and plan to come in in, in August, um, you know, what, what you'll be uh, having to expect. All right, so the first thing that we'd like to talk about with regard to uh, the biology program is I like to talk about our curriculum. And as you can see, we talk about our curriculum as being a diverse curriculum. Um, we, have a, we have it so that you can uh, learn a, a lot of different concepts along the way, uh, spanning the range of biology. Uh, but, um, but then toward the end, you can actually focus in on certain things. So if you find that you're interested in cell molecular biology, or if you're interested in genetics, or if you're interested in ecology, uh, you can kind of focus in um, toward the end of your, your career on, on any of those uh, areas. And so the, the basic thing is that we want to provide students with uh, what we consider to be traditional concepts. And we do this by, uh, by having excellent instruction, uh, by emphasizing problem solving along the way. And by problem solving, we're not necessarily talking about math problems, but we're talking about um, you know, real world situations or other kinds of thought problems uh, that you'd be able to work on. And then a, a real important aspect of our program is the hands-on laboratory experiences when, uh, when we're able to do that. Um, when we look at the biology program, we, we like to talk about uh, the balance within uh, the individual uh, tracks within biology. And so all students, at least through the first two or three years, learn about um, the different areas of biology, cell molecular, uh, organismal, uh, genetics, um, uh, anatomy, physiology, and, 
and uh, population biology. And so there's, there's this balance that we think that is very important uh, for students to be able to master. Uh, we also emphasize connections between the different disciplines of science. So we emphasize connections between biology and chemistry, uh, biology and math, biology and physics, biology, even in environmental science. And so we have these connections that, are, uh, that we like to make. And then um, it's not good enough just to talk about within biology or within the sciences, but then we also provide a lot of connection between the sciences and then the various humanities uh, like social sciences, political science, um, art, uh, um, uh, music even, and other areas. And so there's a lot of uh, uh, interaction that goes on all across our curriculum at Wilkes. Um, in terms of uh, when you come here, uh, the question is, what can you expect? And so what I want to do is just to walk you through pretty much the four years and give you uh, just the highlights of the four years. And clearly one of the things that will happen is that you will um, be given an academic advisor uh, who will uh, very closely guide you through uh, your program of study at Wilkes to make sure that you're, you're on track and that you'll be taking the courses that you need, the courses that you want. Um, and then uh, be able to, uh, um, you know, really graduate, you know, within a, a good period of time, usually four years. So first year, what do we have for you? So we have our Principles of Modern Biology, uh, one and two. Uh, my colleague, Will Trusagi, teaches the first semester course, which is mainly focused on cells and molecules. And then I teach the second semester course, uh, which is mainly focused on what I call biodiversity, plus mammalian anatomy and physiology. Um, then we also have students who take freshman chemistry. Uh, there's uh, elements and compounds would be in the fall, and then the chemical reaction would be in the spring. Uh, we also have a, a calculus track that students will take uh, during their first year or maybe second year, depending upon uh, preparation. Uh, the calculus is kind of interesting because we have a, a straight calculus in the uh, first semester, but then in the second semester, we have a, a, a course in um, modeling, uh, calculus modeling, uh, which is a, uh, um, a course that started up uh, when we had a big grant from uh, the Howard Hughes Foundation. And so we're kind of unique as far as that goes. Uh, then we also have students who take English composition, and then the first year foundations would be a course that everybody takes in the first semester of their freshman year. So that would be the first year, and again, we can talk about it if you have specific questions. I'm happy to answer any of the specific questions that you have um, when I'm finished here. Uh, as far as your second year course goes, you have in the fall uh, something called population evolutionary biology, and then cell and molecular biology would be in the spring. Um, everybody's favorite course, which is organic chemistry, is going to be in the, um, the second, or second year. And then you start taking some of your core electives, including history, psychology, um, art, uh, uh, music, theater arts, uh, dance, you know, whatever, whatever courses you might want to be taking, you have choices out of, out of several. And then there's a course in computer science uh, that you'll be taking as well, typically in your second year. In your third year, you start taking some of our upper level bi uh, biology electives, and I have a, a shot of, of all of the electives that we've offered over the past few years. Uh, there's a seminar type course, it's called Professional Preparation Techniques. Um, there's a, a physics in your third year, one and two that you'd be taking, uh, more core electives, and then a course in statistics that you'd be doing uh, typically in the third year. Some students do in their second year, uh, but usually in the third year. And then your last year uh, is where we give you, you know, pretty much more freedom to take whatever courses you want. Um, you're, you take upper level biology electives, and then all students take something called senior projects. Uh, which you are group, you know, put in a group and or your former group, 
and then you uh, work with a professor and you come up with a, a research project um, that you then study and, and you present it uh, at the end of the year in the form of a, a paper, a poster, and then oral presentations. Notice then you'll be finishing up your core electives and then you'll also have free electives, which would really be any courses outside of biology. Um, so I have this slide right here, which again, I don't know if you can see or not, uh, but this is a, a, a slide that has our upper level courses. We have a whole bunch ranging from genetics, we have plant form and function, uh, comparative anatomy, field zoology, uh, neurophysiology, plant physiology, um, and then the, core, uh, the, the list goes on and on and on. Um, basically what you do is you take five courses, either five or six, depending upon a uh, variety of factors, and uh, there are different areas of study that you have to fulfill, um, but then uh, you'll, you'll do that, and then uh, that's where you get the, the broad range of biology, but then, as I said, toward the end, you can focus in on, on certain areas if you want. Um, so that was all point one. We have 10 of these points here, and I think you'll find that that was the longest one. Um, I'll go through the rest of them rather quickly now. Uh, the next thing is item number two, is that uh, when you're taught at Wilkes, when you come here and you're sitting in a classroom, uh, you will be taught by PhD level faculty who are really dedicated to undergrads. Um, the idea here is that we hire faculty on the basis of their ability to teach undergrads rather than their ability to teach graduate students which if you go to a lot of the, um, the research-oriented uh, schools like Penn State or Temple or Pitt or some of the other schools that we have around uh, that are the large, what we call the R1 schools, you might be taught by a graduate student. Uh, but here we have uh, PhD level faculty who actually wanna be teaching you. Uh, they're, you're re the faculty are rewarded, we are rewarded uh, for work with uh, teaching our undergrads. And again, as, as I said, our courses are not taught by graduate students. So, um, you know, you're, you're taught by experts in the field. Um, I have a, a picture right here, a collage uh, that shows our biology faculty. Um, I'm showing 12 faculty right here. As you can see, we're a, a very disparate group of, of uh, people of different ages, um, different genders, different ethnicities. Um, so rather diverse group, but we all have one thing in common, uh, maybe two things, you know, number one is that we love biology and number two, uh, we love teaching uh, undergrads. And so that's what we have right here. All right, point number three. All right, so we're, we're getting along here. Um, so we have uh, very good teaching laboratories and research laboratories. Uh, for an institution that we call ourselves a small university, we have great analytical equipment. Uh, my colleagues are, are very good at, at, at asking for and, and making grant proposals uh, to be able to get really cutting edge equipment that you find, you know, really at some of the big research labs. Uh, the main thing though is that, is that this equipment is, is available for use by undergraduates, and we don't limit our, our um, use of equipment to graduate students, which again often happens at some of the other schools where the undergrads don't really get hands-on uh, with the equipment that we have. So um, again, that's an important point to note here. Um, item number four, are we still up to number four? Yeah, we're up to number four right now. Um, if nothing else, one of the things that I want you to recognize uh, from my presentation is that research is really, really important within the department. I know that, that you know, a lot of other schools do research, uh, but for, for Wilkes Biology, research is a very, uh, really important aspect of, of what we do. Um, we feel as though that it's a uh, part of what we call a student-centered approach for teaching. Um, and students learn as much by going out in the field or going into a lab as they might do by sitting in the classroom. 
uh, students actually work with faculty, either alone or, or working in groups. And the students will design research projects, you know, based on information the faculty member gives. Uh, the students will collect data and the students will analyze results. And so research then is very important. Again, if you can see what I'm showing right here, um, I'm showing a few students who are working on my project where we're doing a stream assessment on a natural gas pipeline. Um, I have here uh, a slide with a lot of words on it uh, that shows some of our recent research topics. And so just to read off a few, um, we have uh, students who work on something called non-coding RNA. Uh, we have early diagnosis, early, early diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease, uh, how do proteins regulate animal development, what factors regulate met metamorphosis in marine worms, um, grassland food webs, uh, reforestation of areas disturbed by coal mining, um, uh, identifying species using DNA barcoding, lots and lots of different kinds of research, um, really spanning the, the breadth of biology. Um, then, uh, just some pictures here. Again, if you can see the pictures, that's fine. Um, one of the things that happens uh, during the uh, academic year, actually during the summer, is that Wilkes is actually probably busier during the summer than we are during the academic year. Um, I'm seeing uh, a uh, notice here, my internet connection is unstable, so I'm hoping that, that we're okay here. Um, but during the summer, uh, we have dozens of students who stick around and do research. And one of the things that we have that's very nice is that on Wednesday at noon, uh, we all get together and we have, we have pizza. And um, hang on one second. We have pizza and we um, uh, have a great time talking about each other's research. So that would be there. Now, an, an upshot of the research is that students will present at conferences, both regional and national conferences. And so um, you see, you, if you could see what I'm showing you here, uh, you'd be seeing students standing at posters, uh, giving presentations, um, very successful at, uh, at going to conferences. Uh, we usually, uh, our, our students are often confused for graduate students because of the the nature of the projects they work on. All right, and in fact, not only do they go to local and regional conferences, but even to conferences that are far away. Uh, we have um, a picture here of one of my colleagues, Dr. Trizaghi, who is uh, showing um, uh, students standing at a conference in, in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, we have students who go to Europe. We have students who go to uh, Central and South America to go to conferences. Really, they're all over the place in terms of going to, to meetings. Um, we also boast uh, some field sites uh, that um, if you're environmentally oriented, uh, there are places that you can go to that um, to do outside study. Uh, we, Wilkes owns two properties, one uh, near Blakesley called the Jacobs property. We have a natural gas pipeline that goes through. And then we also have a field site uh, south of the campus, uh, south of Lake New Angola called New Angola Bog. Uh, we also have access to lots and lots of other field sites, um, dozens, many dozens of field sites. So if you're into environmental stuff, um, this is a, a great opportunity for you. So now we're up to number seven. And so number seven is, again, we, we have this idea that, uh, that we, we really want to support our students. And so we, um, we try to minimize what we call a weed out mentality. We try to minimize this. What that means by a weed out mentality is that oftentimes you go into a classroom at the beginning of the semester and the students will um, uh, be told by the professor, uh, look to your left, look to your right, and all three of you will be gone uh, by, the, by the end of the semester. We don't do that at Wilkes. We actually want to try to cultivate student interest. Uh, so we, we have students that work in teams. 
Um, you don't really have to worry about uh, students um, uh, sabotaging your experiments uh, or, or stealing your lab workbook or whatever. Um, instead, students view each other as colleagues and not really as competitors. So the supportive atmosphere, the fact that it's been described as being a humane atmosphere at Wilkes is I think one of our, our big selling points. We recognize that, um, uh, that learning biology is hard enough when, uh, and if you have to worry about whether you're gonna get sabotaged by your colleagues, uh, that adds to the, to the stress and at least the, the part of it where you don't really have to worry about being sabotaged, uh, that, is, um, uh, that, that works to your favor. All right, we also have um, opportunities for off-campus coursework and research. And so a lot of internship opportunities are there. Um, we have something called research experience for undergraduate programs. Uh, that students will go to. And then we also have a very active semester abroad uh, program that, and, and even courses that, are, um, that, that take students out of the country, really, for the most part. And it's, uh, it's a very good experience for our students. Um, number nine is that students will engage in, in community projects. And so we have on the left-hand side, if you're able to see what I'm showing here, um, we have students who are participating in a, um, in a, a tree planting exercise uh, up on uh, Avondale Hill uh, near, near campus uh, doing mine reclamation, strip mine reclamation. And then we also have a program uh, called Relay for Light, uh, which is something that's run by Dr. Trizaghi. Uh, and so we have a, uh, it's a fundraiser that um, students are involved in. Probably our, our keynote um, community involvement project is or opportunity um, is we have something called WEBS, Women Empowered by Science. And these are pro programs that uh, bring science to uh, undergrad, or not to undergrads, but to uh, middle school and even upper level elementary school students. And so our, our undergrads are, are very heavily involved in this. And really it's a wonderful activity uh, that is run by uh, uh, Deb Chapman uh, from our department. Um, along with this, we also have honor, an honor society uh, Wilkes has uh, a chapter of what's known as Tri Beta, uh, which is the uh, National Biological Honor Society. And in fact, this past year, uh, we, we won some big award for being uh, very active in, in um, pursuing different kinds of community, uh, community activities. And so if you're into honor societies, as most of us are, um, we have our, our Tri Beta. All right, and then probably the, the one that you're most interested in is, okay, we have this, this wonderful program in biology. Uh, we're very supportive of our students, but what happens after graduation? And so what we find is that our students are, enjoy very high placement in medical schools. Um, and so medical schools include anything from uh, allopathic to osteopathic schools, uh, then we have professional programs like uh, podiatry and dentistry and optometry. Um, and then we have graduate programs. We have some students this year who were placed in some very prestigious graduate programs. In fact, uh, one of our students, uh, Emily Rasavage, uh, was awarded with a $138,000 NSF fellowship, uh, which is a very rare and, and I said, prestigious uh, award. And so she'll be going to Texas A&M University in the fall and she'll be studying ecology. And then we also have students who just simply go off into the employment world. Um, students who are working with uh, um, Sanofi Pasteur, students who work at uh, the local brewery of all places uh, doing biological testing. Um, there are lo lots and lots of opportunities 
even here in Northeastern Pennsylvania, where our students are employed. Um, so when we talk about placement records for the past 20 years, uh, for each year, it's typically above 90% of employment within the field. And one of the things that we really enjoy is having our students, our graduates, uh, come back to us and commenting on how well they're prepared uh, for their jobs. And we have um, employers who, who frequently call us and say, well, I've employed a couple of your students who are doing really well. Do you have any more that you can send us? And the answer is sure, we have more. And so uh, that, that makes it a, a very good um, relationship. So um, basically what, what it's all about is shown in this picture right here, which again, if you can see, uh, this is a picture of graduation. And I'm showing uh, our ornithologist, um, Dr. Jeff Stratford, uh, with uh, Amanda Shaw, uh, who is a graduating senior from last year. Amanda is actually now at um, uh, Hershey Medical Center uh, studying, uh, studying medicine and probably in the middle of the COVID fight right now. Uh, but this is really what it's all about for us is to see our students through to graduation. You know, that's what we really, really care about. So anyway, um, that's, that's really what I have to offer here. Again, if you've seen this presentation before, hopefully now you're thinking about what I'm talking about and, and you're able to uh, maybe formulate some questions. Um, in terms of my contact information, uh, again, my name is uh, Kenneth Klemo, K-L-E-M-O-W. Again, I'm the chair of the biology and health sciences department. My email is kenneth.klemo. So it's K-E-N-N-E-T-H dot K-L-E-M-O-W uh, at wilkes.edu. So K-E-N-N-E-T-H dot K-L-E-M-O-W at wilkes, W-I-L-K-E-S dot E-D-U. And then if you want to try calling me, uh, my office number, and I do check it periodically, uh, my office is 570-408-4758. And so I think that with that, uh, that's really the, the overview of what I wanted to talk about. And so what we'll do now is I'd be very happy uh, to entertain whatever questions uh, that you might have. Ken, since we have um, a fairly small group, should we take take them off mute? Yeah, take them off mute. Yep. All right. so. Hopefully, we won't hear anybody. Oh, yeah, if you have some background music or something, I would ask you to turn it off. Oops. Let me see here. It's like everybody's still unmute, still muted. There we go. Good morning again. So does anyone have any questions they would like to ask? You can use the chat feature or, or just, um, just ask Dr. Klima. Hello. <laughs> Should we start off asking where everyone is from? We know Joshua is from Shimokin, so welcome from Shimokin. Okay, what about Matt? I see Matt is there. Hi, Matt. Not hearing Matt. Okay, we're in Hanover, Pennsylvania. Sounds good. Okay. okay. Excellent. All right, John Anselmi. I'm going to call on each of you. So, John Anselmi. I'm about 10 miles north of Scranton. Oh, okay. What, what's the name of the town? Scott Township. Oh, okay. Okay. Are, are you familiar with the with the with the windmills in Waymark? Yeah, I am. Okay. So that was I do environmental consulting. And so that was a project that I, I actually laid out that entire project when we oh, wow. about uh, 15 years ago or so. Uh, yeah, yeah, we get around. All right, Jocelyn, where's Jocelyn? No. Hello? Can you pipe in or type it in the 
that function? Okay. Okay, so, oh, your microphone, you're, uh, you're, Dr. Open. Oh, you're from Mountaintop. Okay, we got a lot of students from Mountaintop. Sounds Excellent. good. Okay. Okay. Um, Dr. Klima, can you tell us a little bit maybe about how uh, pre-professional programs work as far as advising? Uh, I know we have a, a full-time person dedicated to uh, health sciences advising and uh, helping them get into medical school or physical okay. therapy school, that type of thing. So how does, yeah. how does that work? Okay, that's, that's, that's very good. Well, first of all, um, one thing to notice is that we actually have two, um, among, our, um, uh, among our faculty, when, when I said that all of our faculty have doctorates, and maybe I said that we all have PhDs, that isn't quite true because we actually have two of our faculty have MD degrees or medical doctors, uh, Dr. Uh, Gutierrez and Dr. Almecki. And so we, we do have um, uh, a lot of advice that comes from people who are actually MPs. But even beyond that, we have uh, a woman, Connie Dabrowski, uh, who does a marvelous job of uh, advising students. Uh, she's our health science advisor. Actually, she's our uh, coordinator for student success. Uh, but she she's the one who really um, uh, coordinates all of the, the med school applications and she provides input into uh, what med schools uh, students ought to be going to uh, or thinking about applying to. And, and again, she does a phenomenal job uh, with that. So, uh, so Connie Dabrowski is our, our lead person right. as well, if that goes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Connie, Connie's fantastic and a, a real help to our students who have that as their goal. Um, so that's, that's good. Can you talk a little bit about the research experience? You mentioned uh, there are a, a lot of various opportunities available, but students can get involved in that pretty quickly. Um, yes, uh, certainly. So um, uh, generally research is, is required of all students in their senior year. <laughs> Uh, but I would say that at least half, maybe two thirds, or maybe three quarters of our students actually get involved in doing research as early as um, their freshman year. And very often a student will pick a, a lab uh, that they'll work in, whether it's my laboratory or Dr. Cadlix, or Dr. Steele or Dr. Stratford, and they'll, they'll be doing some level of work in their freshman year during their sophomore year, if they choose to stay on, they'll be uh, moving up to having more responsibility. And then really they uh, keep on going through their, their junior year and senior year, um, and then keep on uh, increasing the amount of responsibility that they have. Um, again, uh, when if you are pre-med oriented, uh, certainly by having research under your belt, that is something that uh, I know that our students talk about a lot during interviews when they go to med school. Uh, so all of our students who are pre-health science oriented, excuse me, all of our students do get a, a good background in, in research, but then um, along the way, if you decide that you really, really like to do research, uh, then you can um, uh, really change your perspective. And then maybe instead of going to medical school, uh, you go to graduate school, or you could even get a job where research is, is broad. Uh, the other thing that happens, though, with research is that, and, and we, we see this among our, our very best students, is that it is possible to get something called an MD-PhD degree, which is a combination of a degree in medical or in medicine, as well as doing research. And we have quite a few students who've chosen that track, and they're all extraordinarily successful in terms of uh, what, what, they're, what they're doing right now. Um, but yeah, and, and so the research, uh, there's, I guess the couple things to note is that the research is usually external or either externally or internally funded, um, especially 
during the summer, students get paid for doing research. And then as an added incentive, um, if you're here during the summer, we also provide uh, free housing for students as well. And that's always a, a really, really big benefit uh, for the students who are doing research. So yeah, it's, it's something that, that I'm very proud to talk about and it's something that students really, really should be aware of. Fantastic. And you shared with us that, that great picture of all the various faculty. Um, I'm always impressed by the expertise that our faculty bring to the table and um, you know, there's a variety. I don't know if you can speak a little bit to the, the various specialties that they have. I know um, Dr. Field, for instance, is internationally recognized um, is a, in seed dispersal and squirrels. Right. Um, so he brings a lot of, of expertise there. We have a geneticist. Can you speak a little bit about that? Sure, sure, absolutely. Yeah, so, so whenever we hire faculty, you know, we want to make sure that, that we're covering uh, the different areas of biology, because um, biology is a relatively broad area that has many, many subspecialties. And so typically, we, when we hire faculty, they are, um, they'll cover maybe two or three areas within, uh, within the discipline. Um, so in terms of, of some of the areas that we have uh, that are covered, uh, we do have, uh, uh, um, as Kim mentioned, uh, we have uh, Dr. Lisa Cadlick, uh, who is a geneticist. She is what we call a fruit fly geneticist. So she studies fruit flies and uh, she will, um, uh, she does basically uh, what we call developmental genetics, you know, looking at how certain genes are turned on and turned off uh, during the course of, of embryological development. Uh, then we have Dr. Valerie Coulter. Coulter Dr. Coulter is um, very well known for her research into uh, certain kinds of cancers. Uh, and in fact, we, all, we actually have a couple of faculty who look at cancer biology. Um, one of the, the other faculty members who's a PhD or who's an MD rather um, is Dr. Linda Gutierrez. And so she studies uh, colon cancer um, and uh, really had, in fact, she just won a big award uh, for uh, her, her, for her advising um, uh, a couple days ago. But, uh, but she goes to meetings quite a bit and, um, you know, has a lot of connections. So if you're into biomedical research, uh, that would be a place to go. Uh, one of our more uh, pr prolific uh, writers in terms of articles is Dr. Will Trzaghi, who again, you'd come to know by, by being in the first semester of the biology class. Uh, Dr. Trzaghi, like myself, uh, we're botanists, but uh, whereas I'm more of a plant ecologist, uh, Dr. Trzaghi is more of a cell molecular biologist. And so he studies RNA, and especially what we call um, non-coding RNA. And, and he has collaborations really around the world. And every few weeks, he sends us notices of another paper that he's gotten published in the peer-reviewed journal. Um, as I mentioned, Dr. Trzaghi, I should also mention that one of the research projects that we have going on right now looks at a plant called the Japanese knotweed. And so Japanese knotweed is a, is a really bad invasive herb uh, that grows in, especially along river banks and creek banks. And it's a, a plant though that has um, a, uh, uh, a chemical inside called resveratrol. And if you know a little bit about plant biochemistry uh, and how it's used in health, you'll know that resveratrol is a chemical that uh, is actually reputed um, to serve as an antioxidant, and, it's, and it provides um, really a, a way of, of increasing your lifespan by a certain number of years. You know, people are, are working on this, and it turns out that you mostly get resveratrol from drinking red wine, but it turns out that uh, the, the resveratrol uh, is actually more found in the Japanese knotweed more in Japanese knotweed than in um, 
than in red wine. And so Dr. Trizaghi and I are doing research um, into that. Uh, then we have uh, Dr. Bill Biggers. Uh, Dr. Biggers, uh, who everybody loves within the department, um, is uh, uh, an invertebrate biologist. Um, he studies um, different kinds of worms and ba basically studies the physiology of what makes a worm, uh, a marine worm, decide to undergo a metamorphosis from being uh, a larval stage to being in a, an adult stage. And so his work, again, is very, uh, very well recognized. Um, so th that's a thumbnail sketch of some of the people who, um, who, who work with us. Uh, and again, we, we get along very well as a department. Uh, we, we have collaborations within the department. So often a student uh, will not only work with one faculty member, but they'll work with a couple faculty members. And it turns out that it's, uh, it's a collaboration and a, um, uh, uh, a mechanism that allows students to, to really learn how science is done. Fantastic. Um, it looks like, I, I don't know if you noticed, Dr. Klimo, I typed a question into the chat asking what, what the students were interested in. And we have a pre-vet, a pre-optometry, and a, a pre-med on the list. I know um, we have the Guthrie Scholar Program is, is very unique to Wilkes, and, and that gives students, pre-med students, the opportunity to uh, apply and, and go to uh, Robert Packer Hospital in Sarah, Pennsylvania for a semester and work side by side with uh, medical professionals and get a real feel for the work. Um, and that can help give them a leg up in their, in their medical school applications. Right, absolutely. And, and in fact, we have, uh, uh, again, that, that program, we have the program that involves uh, Penn State Hershey in which students are actually um, accepted into medical school uh, by the time that they matriculate, they, they start their, their studies at Wilkes. Mm -hmm. So we have this pre-med scholars program uh, that's really very successful at uh, getting students um, involved in medicine, uh, getting students to learn about medicine, uh, both from a clinical as well as a research perspective. And again, this semester at Robert Packer Hospital is something that uh, the students really, really cherish. It's uh, whenever I talk to students about how their experience at, at Robert Packer is going, um, they always speak about it in glowing terms. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a very good experience. You know, I've had the opportunity so, to listen in on some of their presentations, and they're always very impressive, the research that they get to work on there during right. that semester. Uh, is really interesting. Right. Okay. One of the points that, that let me let me address uh, one thing real quick, and that is students often ask about class size. And so in terms of class size, um, generally our classes, especially our upper level classes, are actually capped at um, either 15 or 16 students. So, um, you know, especially at the upper level, we get to know you quite well. Uh, and then at the freshman level, freshman and sophomore level, uh, for the freshman class, um, we have our introductory biology, which right now I'm in the process of teaching. Actually, I'm again doing it remotely. Um, for that one, I have 120 students. Uh, the way we work that, at least when we're meeting face to face, is that um, uh, we have uh, two what we call breakout sessions. And so we have a nine o'clock session that has about 60 students and a uh, one o'clock session that has about 60 students. And then we meet on Tuesdays together as a group. Um, we have that in the bio 121 or the bio 122 rather the 121, which as I said, is the first semester course uh, taught by Dr. Trizaghi. Uh, that actually has a somewhat larger enrollment. Uh, the point though, is that you're taught by faculty who, who've been teaching these courses for a number of years and really know how to reach individual students, even though you're in a large uh, classroom setting. There are certain things that we do uh, to really involve the students. But for the most part, aside from, the, from those couple courses, um, what you'd expect to see 
are courses that um, generally might be as few as six students uh, to maybe as many as maybe 30 students. So the, um, the class size uh, is, is usually quite limited. And we, um, again, do a good job of getting to know the strengths and weaknesses of, of any of our students. Um, the, the key thing to recognize also, just to add on to my last point, is that if you find that you're doing well, uh, we will challenge you even more. Um, if we find that you're, you're lagging behind a little bit, um, you know, we're, our doors are open and we all, all of us have office hours and we're all really interested in having you be successful. So we have a lot of what we call supplemental instruction. Uh, we have a lot of tutoring help that's available. There are study sessions. Um, the faculty even run study sessions. And so there's just a lot out there uh, that, will, that really will help you uh, to achieve your maximal potential. All right, question. Looks like there's an ecologist in the group. We do? Uh, yeah, with interest in uh, a master's in biology with a focus in entomology. Oh, okay. So we, we actually have uh, the, the, the one student who got the really big uh, NSF grant, um, Emily Rasavage, uh, she's actually really interested in insects. And so she's going to Texas A&M University and she's gonna be studying um, interactions between insects and host plants. And so we have her, we have um, a few other students uh, who are also interested either in entomology per, per se or some aspect of invertebrate biology. Um, and uh, we, we actually have research in which students um, look at insect, uh, um, you know, the role of insects in, in helping us to determine clean versus dirty water in streams. Uh, we also have students who are studying um, the development of, uh, of insects as it relates to, um, where am I going with this? Um, uh, insects that uh, are, are uh, parts of food webs. And so if you know about ecology, you probably heard the term food web. Uh, we have a lot of uh, students who study that. Um, and then from the perspective of uh, developmental biology, we have students who, who study insects as far as that goes. So if you're in entomology, um, you've stumbled into the right place here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we also have uh, someone interested in pre-veterinarian and pre-optometry. Okay. So as far as the pre-vet... Jocelyn. Oh, no, sorry. What's that? Okay, so as far as the pre the pre vet goes, um, we usually have each year maybe anywhere from two to five students who go off to veterinary medicine. Um, you know, it seems to be uh, a, again a, a viable um, career pathway for a lot of our students. In fact, it's funny because as I look around uh, the the valley and and northeastern Pennsylvania. Um, and look at, at people who are veterinarians, I see quite a few of our, of my former students who are, um, you know, who do the pre-vet or do the veterinary medicine route. And so we have students who um, are at Tufts University right now, um, and uh, Christina Schonk, I can think of right off the bat, who's, who's doing very, very good work um, up at Tufts. And then we also had uh, a student um, at, just uh, accepted at one of the Texas schools, uh, Texas Veterinary, I think it's Southwestern uh, uh, Texas uh, Veterinary School. So um, this is just off the top of my head. I know that we have others who are, who are going off to vet school as well. And so um, Connie would again help you with that, but it's something that, uh, that, that you would hardly be alone if you were interested in veterinary medicine. As far as optometry goes, optometry is one of our, our core, uh, what we consider to be the allied health professions. Um, as far as uh, um, programs, again, students 
uh, go to the uh, optometric or the optometry school down in Philadelphia. Um, and then there are other optometry schools that students go to. But uh, once again, you also have, uh, again, I would say that optometry, dentistry, and podiatry are the three top allied health um, uh, professions the students get into. Any other questions? You can feel free to unmute yourself and ask your question or type it in the chat. Okay, hopefully this has been helpful. It's a good group. It's a diverse group. Isn't it good? Of interest, lots of diverse interests in, in, in there. Very good. All right. Well, do you have anything to add, Ken? Uh, no, no, this is, this is good. You know, we're, um, uh, we take great pride. Uh, the faculty and the staff take great pride in what we do. Um, we, we feel as though that we're uh, a big enough school to be able to provide uh, enough diversity of interest to students. Um, but yet we're small enough to get the students to be able to, to know you by name and be able to know your, your strengths and weaknesses. And so it's, um, you know, we're sort of in the happy medium in terms of size. And again, you have just a, a group of faculty and staff who really love what they do and love interacting with students. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Wilk's dedication to research has, has earned us a national ranking now. We're a nationally ranked research university. Um, so that's a really nice opportunity. I know a couple of you are pretty close to home. We like to say we're a nationally ranked research university close to home. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Good position. Well, uh, we thank everyone for joining us today. Again, this session has been recorded and it will be posted on our website, um, I think by definitely by tomorrow um, or sometime this week. So uh, if you want to go back and review anything, feel free to look for that. And uh, Dr. Klimo had provided his contact information if you have any follow-up questions. Uh, again, okay. thank you Can I just, maybe we have one or two minutes remaining. Oh. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing in the chat here, Jocelyn is asking, um, when it comes to classes per year that we present in the slideshow, are they set in stone? Are they suggestions? Um, sort of half, half and half. Uh, certainly, we, we like for you to take uh, your intro bio in your freshman year. We like for you to take the chemistry in your freshman year uh, because there's certain courses that are um, uh, prerequisite to other courses. And so we would prefer that you'd be taking, for example, organic chemistry in your, in your sophomore year rather than taking it in your senior year. But all that being said, uh, there is lots of variability that goes on and, um, and, and I, I would say that you, you won't, just like you won't find two snowflakes that are exactly the same, uh, you won't find two students who have the exact same schedule uh, in, their, in their four years. So there is quite a bit of variability and that's something that the students will um, uh, work out with their advisor. And again, if you're pre-med, uh, you work that out with Connie Dabrowski as well. Thank you, I almost missed that one. Thank you, Jocelyn, for adding that question. I'll just double check here and make sure. Um, anything else to add? Okay, no, then. I'm, I'm Thank good. you so much for joining us this, okay. Thank you for joining us this morning. And again, you can look on the, look for the video online later this week. And we look forward to welcoming you to campus real soon. Okay, and if you have any questions, just shoot me an email. Love getting emails. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you.